Hi. Art. Art. Yeah, I see you. We got a space here for you. Okay, thank you. So that way you can talk to both sides of the room. Right. But if you want to eat some of your food, um, go ahead. Oh, we got an extra chair if you want. Anyway, so as I was saying, one of the issues were that with this new policy, if you all of a sudden get to the subway, it's 10 o'clock at night, and you've managed to get on the Orange Line, the Orange Line can accommodate seven or eight buses on the Orange Line. With the new policy, if this bike policy was implemented, you would get down to the red line in North Hollywood, and all of a sudden, if it was two, two bikes per car, and you've got a two-car train, that means four bikes. But if the bus has brought seven bikes in, all of a sudden, with this new policy, theoretically, let's say there was 12 bikes at the station, and only, the train's only going to take four, all of a sudden, it's like picking who's going to get to go home, and then the trains are somewhat empty late at night. So we had concerns about these policies. Uh, another thing that we've covered in the newsletter here with me, so why don't you just say what city you're from, uh, what your name is, first and last name, and so Art kind of has an understanding of uh, who everybody is here. Okay, Nick Matan, from Chicago Park, West End of San Fernando. Harry. Uh, my name is Harry Pedersen, I'm from Pico Rivera, from the east side of town. Pico, what's that? Uh, Bradley Tollison, um, from Torrance, a student. Yeah, but everybody else does it. Gerard is... All right, well. Joe Pallet, that's also a college student. Kendra Irvin, also from Culver City, by the way, and a uh, member of various rail and transit groups. And Art, here's some new Culver City bus schedules. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can't 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 Matthew Ballard, uh, Westall, Don Rubin, Oakland. I just come here because I like the sandwiches. <laughs> 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 he, he, he started out no, he started out Metro on Monday morning. So you work here. He actually went from I live in I live in uh, I live in East Boston. So we need to time this out another thirty seconds so I can finish this beer on the bike. But um, my mom. Department Executive Director of the Transit Coalition, and I will do the begging between the arts getting the sandwiches. Transit Coalition is a nonprofit. Sometimes we're the rabble rousers, sometimes we're the uh, public watchdog, sometimes we take a look at some of the things that don't seem right and try to expound the right way to do things rather than the wrong way to do things. And our goal is to make a livable transit system that most people in this room, with the exception of me, have been to Europe, have been to other parts of the planet, and they have ideas on how things work and how they work better elsewhere. And we have a CEO that actually knows how things ought to work, but the problem is that for whatever bizarre things in this city, things don't work the way they're supposed to work, they just kind of work the way they do work. And as a change agent and all, we're a nonprofit public charity. We're always begging for some money to, uh, it's, a, it's a tax deductible donation. And I do have envelopes here if anybody wants to chip in some money, we'd really appreciate it. And the newsletters you've got, you know, it's like printing these newsletters up all of a sudden on Saturday. I don't like to pay retail for my cartridges, but to have this for the mailing, I had to go pay uh, poor Staples $400 for a couple cartridges that I could get for you know, $160 if it was something I could order my mail order on Thursday, but who's to know I would get faulty cartridges. So anyways, um, we like to uh, do as good a job as we can. And tonight we have uh, the CEO of Metro. He's been at the predecessor company, Rapid Transit District, and he's been there for a long time in the industry. Before he came to Metro, he was the CEO at Orange County Transportation Authority. Before that, he was at the transportation organization in Minneapolis, St. Paul. He opened the light rail system there, where everybody said that was impossible, it would never happen. And lo and behold, after he left Los Angeles, he took that system and turned it around. And it was one of the biggest successes in that part of the country is that light rail system. They thought that they would get a third of the riders. In other words, it's 
more writers or something like that, it's huge. So that's one of the successes of the system. So without further ado, are you ready? Sure. public employer paid for the tuition at USC. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I uh, worked my way up at the old RTD and MT. I was there 25 years. I was gone for 13 years. I've been back for a few years now. Um, in my, I've been there about five months. In that time, I've um, been to visit our bus divisions. Uh, oddly enough, I've not been to a rail division yet, but I've been to uh, Division 7 a couple of times, Division 10, 1, 2, 3, Division 9, Division 8 and 15. Um, I would hazard to guess there's probably not been a CEO of those divisions in 15 years. Um, I've um, ridden buses and trains during the few months I've been back. I take a train up every day, most every day, in the county. Um, when I go to meetings, I took a red line train today to get back to NTA for a meeting I had. So um, I intend to be somebody in the employee of the NTA who uses the system. Um, I, um, one of my primary tasks is to, um, I'll talk about operations for a minute before I go into the capital program. Uh, I feel very keenly uh, about the need to run top quality customer service. So I've been meeting with the operations managers over the past few months on such things as contract performance, um, bus cleanliness, uh, operator courtesy, uh, how we handle safety issues, uh, things of that nature, wheelchair lifts, whatever it might be. And I will tell you that I've spoken with Mayor Villarigosa about it. One of his desires, and I certainly agree with this, is that we need to get top management and, and MTA refocused on running a quality bus system. It's a big bus system. Uh, we hear a lot of people, about 1.35 million people per day. So it's very important for Los Angeles. I've met with classes, bus operator classes already, and with people who want to be bus operators. And I tell them my experience, and I tell them how important their job is. Uh, there's people who need the MTA to get to work or to school. And uh, if, if we're not successful, then they aren't successful, and that undermines the success of Los Angeles, LA County. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that we get a tighter focus on bus operations. I was on a bus at Division 7 that had just been cleaned a, a month or two ago, and I, I, I thought that the, that the interior design of the bus was inadequate as regards making it graffiti resistant. Um, so, we'll be looking at that in future bus procurements. Uh, I've begun to review staffing levels on bus cleanliness processes for getting buses cleaned, and suffice it to say, um, we're going to get a lot more focused on those areas. Um, as regards rail, obviously it's a growing part of, of the MTA system. Um, probably one of the things I would will, will be working on is to ensure that we have integration within the MTA uh, for the folks that run the buses and the folks that run the trains. Uh, moreover, we should have better integration with the munis. They run quite a few buses these days. Uh, and with Metro uh, and the Amtrak service that goes into unionization. So we have, we have a, an important task before us, but there's a lot of opportunity there to really provide service on uh, uh, a system which really integrates Los Angeles